Welcome to Conversations with Eugene Ebner, powerful talk that will change your life. Hi there, welcome. I'm excited today because I have a fantastic individual who's not only a really great performer, but I think he's extremely funny and a very caring individual. My husband and I adore him and follow him like fans on Facebook, Mr. Yes. Elliot Peterson. Hello, hello, hello. Oh Hi, my God, I Elliot. love that introduction. I feel so fancy. Well, you are fancy. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm really happy to have you on today. Because, yeah, happy to be here. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Also, I'm thankful because you are literally, I was just informed by you, leaving tomorrow to be able to start, what, your tech rehearsals for yeah. the West Coast National Tour of the Musical Health. Health. Yeah, yeah. So we start, yeah, we fly out tomorrow and start rehearsals, I think, probably Friday morning, first thing. So, bada boom, bada bang. Yeah, it is. Exciting, but I'm sure exhausting. Yeah, a little, yes, exactly. A little bit of both. Apparently, the theater where we're teching is also uh, the theater with the highest altitude, like, at the highest altitude in all of America. So, that means we'll probably just all be, like, dying <laughs> yeah that should be fun. but hey it's good training right it'll make once we go on to other theaters it'll just make it easy right hopefully well yeah if you could do it there what's that saying it sounds familiar if you can do it there you can do it anywhere exactly absolutely <laughs> instead of new york new york it's new mexico right. new mexico right <laughs> now this tour what is about a little over a month long uh about, about two, two months. months about two, two months. months yeah I yeah. wasn't thinking uh, November, December. And how many cities approximately? Ooh, I think quite a few. Um, I mean, I, could, I think probably 15, I would say. Yeah, we do cool. like a, a, a handful of one-nighters in Texas, which kind of ups the amount of places that we go to. So I'm excited. Almost every single, actually every single place we've, we're going to, I've never been to including some states. So that's really, you know, just like the state of Texas I've never been to, and we'll play a handful of cities there. So that's, that's really exciting. Very Feels exciting. Fun. Not only yeah. because you get to do what you love, be on this tour, go to places like you said that you haven't been to, but yeah. how magical to, to be in a show that brings a lot of joy to people at the holidays. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You'll have all your little, your little fans in grade school going, Elliot. Like, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you don't mind me asking, because this is interesting to people, especially on an educational standpoint, mm -hmm. when did you know, what age did you know that you wanted to pursue musical theater and, and performing? Oh, gosh. I was, I was, as they say, bit by the bug very early on because my mom... Um, so I grew up, uh, spent six years, was born in Denver, Colorado. Then my family moved to Sheridan, Wyoming, um, where I spent six, lived for six years. And then we moved to Billings, Montana, where I had the, um, where I spent like my golden years from about third grade until my sophomore year of high school. But my first show ever was Annie Jr. And I played Sandy the Dog. And I my got one little solo line, which is when, and he's saying, tomorrow, tomorrow, I got to go, rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> Oh, my God, I love that. And, of course, like, you know, because I was, like, maybe six or seven, you know, and had, like, face paint on, like, a dog and a whole dog costume, like, obviously the audience, but, like, loved it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, they love me. It's so cool. So I think that was, that was the moment where I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so awesome you know, just the experience and being in front of people and, you know, getting that reaction back. And then, and then soon after that, when we moved to Billings, Montana, I was really lucky. Like there was a great community theater scene of like that was really involved with youth theater. And so by being there, like I was able to take class and also be in shows and like just, you know, be part of that whole community. And I think it was like right about like Maybe it was like nine years old. I think I was in maybe fourth or fifth grade. I was just like, I have to do this. I just have to. And the rest is history. <laughs> well, 
Well, like you said, you knew, and I think that's what it is for most people in the arts. It's this, yeah. this passion that's from a young age. Now, you decided then to obviously go into getting a degree in musical theater? Yes, yeah. Um, so actually, well, taking a step back, I, so I was going, going to high school in Billings, um, and then right around my sophomore year, I heard about this boarding school in Massachusetts called Walnut Hill, and I eventually, you know, this is like right around where websites and all this stuff were like being were huge, and Walnut Hill had a great website, so I watched all these videos, and it's an arts boarding school in Massachusetts, and so I... Uh, looked it up and like fell in love with this place and ended up applying um, kind of sort of behind my parents back <laughs> maybe may, may or not have been completely honest with them that I was doing that but yeah sent in a video and then long story short uh, they had a summer program like a seven week uh, summer program over the summer so after my sophomore year of high school I went there and I did this uh, summer program there at Walnut Hill and then they uh, then invited me to attend the school year round. And so I was extremely fortunate and my parents were able to like pull all these strings and uh, get the money. And so I went to that boarding school for my junior and senior year of high school. And then from there, um, one that was really great and like prepares you for college auditions and stuff. So I then auditioned, spent my whole senior year of high school auditioning for universities and conservatories across the country and uh, ended up going to Syracuse in upstate New York where I got a BFA in musical theater. Awesome. Yeah. Another thing that you brought up that I feel is very important for mm -hmm. any performer in any field is the audition process. Yeah. And that's something that, in my opinion, going through it myself in, the, in my past yeah. with performing, it is something that you continuously evolve into and grow into. And I think for me, the biggest thing that I had to learn was that there's only one me, one of Eugene, Absolutely. right? First mm -hmm. of all, comparing yourself to others doesn't do any good. And also dealing with rejection. Yeah. Don't you think? Because there's, there's the many times where we'll go out, we'll get rejected, but it's getting back on that horse, so to speak, right. and putting yourself out there and being okay with the no's because out of maybe 50 no's, there could be one yes that leads to something right. magical. Yeah, and then hopefully we'll lead to more yeses, you know, because it's all about being in the right place at the right time and knowing the right people and obviously doing doing the work and, you know, being a good person and all that stuff, but... Yeah, I think that's like, it's constant, it's this thing where you kind of have to put all yourself into, like last week, for instance, I got a, uh, the opportunity to submit for this the show that I really, really wanted. And so I spent all this time and energy, like uh, getting a coach and um, learning a new song and filming the audition and, you know, getting so nice, you know, meeting with her friends so that they could record me. And, uh, you know, I didn't end up getting it, which is fine, but I put so much energy and so much heart into it, which I don't regret at all, because you have to do that time and time again. You have to, pour, you know, kind of pour yourself into it um, and then just be able to say, okay, well, I've done what I did, you know, I did my best and that's, that's just like part of the game, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like getting up and like you said, getting back on the horse and saying, okay, that one didn't work out, but what's next? So... Good. It never gets easier, though. The rejection, like, it still stings. I've kind of tried to make a deal with myself that, like, you know, if I do find out that I don't get a job or didn't get a call back or whatever, that I give myself, like, maybe a day, maybe two days to just be in, like, deep mourning. <laughs> I can be so sad, and I can talk about it, and I can complain about it, and I can be angry and be all the emotions, you know? And then once I've had that day or whatever, um, I, you just got to move on. You know, have a donut and call it a day. <laughs> or a Popeye's chicken. Or a Popeye's chicken. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Let's just, <laughs> let's, um, let's uh, kind of fill everybody in, even though that they don't know exactly what we're talking about. Come on, Elliot. Come on, Eugene. Oh my, yeah, I'm obsessed with, come on. It started from, um, 
Laganja. Well, I think the, even she got from from RuPaul's Drag Race says it all the time. And then there's like been a whole bunch of parodies of her saying it. And so, yeah, now I just say, come on, water bottle. Come on, Popeye's chicken. You can just say it to whatever. It's literally, it, the opportunities are endless. So. Exactly. Come on, interview. Come on. <laughs> Elf, the musical national tour on, on the West Elf, Coast. The <laughs> West Coast. But see, oh that's, this is a very good point to bring up because you said, allow yourself to mourn the rejection. I yeah. think if that's healthy in any aspect of our life and in any business that we go into, but I do know that show business can be very up and down. I think it gives an opportunity for all of us as individuals, as artists in whatever field or genre we're going into or that we are in, to be able to expand and grow through it because yeah. it's, we don't have a constant stability necessarily. Mm -hmm. And even individuals that we see climb the ladder or become well known or win the Tony or whatever, that's wonderful. But I can guarantee, as you know, that they had a lot of hard work, most yeah. likely anyway, for years to get to the point they are and they still do even when they're at the top of their game. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, you, like, if you think about Tony Award winners, you know, if they've won Tonys for, you know, being best leading actress or whatever, they're now put into a certain category, and, it, you know, in some ways, it kind of limits them, you know, because they can't, they can't really take a step down, in terms, you know, so it's interesting, you know, even when you feel like you've reached the, the top or whatever, you know, you win a Tony Award, then what comes after that, you know, it's like, well, then now you have to be you can only pretty much play leads or, you know, or play parts. You can't, you know, just in terms of the career step ladder, if we're following that formula. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Even when you think you've uh, made it, there's still work and there's still, there's still things that you have to do to be able to keep going. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up as well. You're bringing up very good points, by the way. Well, oh, thank you. you <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Elliot. <laughs> So, okay, let's bring this up now, if you don't mind. Yeah. What, if You don't have to share completely, because this could be vulnerable to everyone watching, for you, I mean. <laughs> but what is, what's a, do you mind sharing? Do you have a goal? I mean, do you want to climb that ladder? I mean, I guess that's kind of a silly question, because you always want to do well in the business, and you want to keep growing as a performer, but what are your goals? I mean, do you want to be on Broadway? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, it's interesting. I think that's also like shifted, you know, in terms of the ideal career goal has changed a lot since I've graduated college, and probably is going to continue to change um, as I grow up. But you know, I think being on Broadway is totally, you know, something I've dreamed about since I was like that eight or nine year old who you know, got some laughs from being Sandy the dog and Amy Jr., you know, and I think that is definitely a goal. I think it's also just like, I mean, it sounds kind of silly and stereotypical, but I think it's also just like being part of just great projects and great, you know, work and just feeling good about that. I think there's really nothing better than that, you know, um, you know, and to feel like you're actually doing something that is, you know, shifting people's minds and changing, changing the way they think about something or the way they see something or how they feel for two and a half hours. So, you know, I think as long as that's kind of just the goal for every project um, that I can, you know, go into, uh, that would be, that's the goal, you know, to just do good work and feel good about it. <laughs> Amazing. And I think that's brilliant what you just said. And I think a lot of people can take from that. It's not about the fame. It's not about status. It's really about the work. And like you said, being able to inspire others or create change, because that is the power of theater. It's the power of acting and performing and television and Broadway itself. Yeah. It's, this is what I love about the Broadway community, even though I don't know a ton of people that have been on Broadway, I know some that have, and the times that I do go to New York, even going backstage at some of, some of the shows, it's a very humble community. It's a tight yeah. community of 
like-minded individuals that really do, for the most part, come from what you just said. We were even talking about Anna Lee off camera. I want to bring her up because of what you said. I interviewed her a year and a half ago almost, and I said to her, how do you, or I asked her, how do you stay so humble? How do you, because to me, she's the same person now as she was when I knew when she, she was 17 years old. And you know what she said is what similar to what you said. She focuses on the work. Mm -hmm. Focuses on the gratitude of being able to share good work and that she, in fact, is making a living doing what she loves. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. there's so many people who would, you know, die for this opportunity to be able to do it. And I, you know, I'm lucky enough in it to do it. It's just crazy. It's just, I pinch myself every day to be like, oh my gosh, I am actually living in New York City and majority of the time have been lucky enough to work as an actor, which is really cool. Really, really, really cool. Um, but also I'm proud of the work I've done, you know, I'm proud of like that I really have worked hard and will continue to, to you know, to be successful. Yes, and, and patting yourself on the back and acknowledging like what you just said, right? But come on, <laughs> no, pat on the back. <laughs> and it's taken it's taken a while for me to like learn to actually do that because I think it is important to kind of take a step back and say, oh wow, okay, that's cool that I've accomplished that, you know? Because I think we get caught up, especially as actors, because it's not like you said, there's not a lot of stability or any stability, um, really. So you know you're constantly just like, what's next? What's next? And you don't really get the opportunity to say, oh, well, look at what I've done the past year or past two years. Um, so, and it's taken a while, you know, I graduated almost four years ago to actually say, okay, cool. I've, I've done some cool stuff. <laughs> but there's still more I would like to do. <laughs> so. Well, and you are, and, and that's the thing I can tell about you is you're focused but you're level-headed at the same time and you are focused on the work and the gratitude piece. What's a one piece of advice that you would give to someone about breaking into the business, into musical theater, into performing arts? Wow. One piece of advice. I think you just got to, I think taking class and training is so important and just really the more you know, the better you'll be. And I think, um, you know, just say yes to every opportunity, you know, I mean, within reason, of course, that comes your way. Because you can just, just even the people you meet from, even if it's a job or a show that doesn't pay, doesn't mean that those people aren't going to help you out or see something in you that will eventually lead to something, you know. Um, I think it's just, you know, like, just striving for the good work and doing it, you know, I think it's easy sometimes to get caught up, especially when you're living in New York city and get, and get so caught up in the fear of putting yourself out there. Cause it is scary to go to an audition and put yourself out there and be rejected. Um, but you know, you don't get a show and you don't get a job if you stay home and be scared, if you're scared, <laughs> you know, like I have, I have to tell myself that like sometimes it's so scary to walk into that room, but 80% of it is just showing up. The other 20% is, you know, the other 10% is you doing the work in the room. And then the other 10% is out of your control. But the majority of it is just showing up and just being there. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking to a friend right now who doesn't want to do theater necessarily, but wants to move to New York. And I'm just telling her, then do it. Just move to New York. You know, we're, you know, we're, we're, privileged enough that if we move here, we can figure it out. Like in terms of how to pay your bills and how to, how to make a living or whatever. And you, you'll figure it out, but you just gotta, you just gotta do it pretty much. You got to take that leap of faith. Yeah. Because you're, I love what you brought up about the 80% is showing up. That is so valuable. And I think that's for anybody at any age yeah. in life. And that can go with, business, the arts, relationships, anything. Yeah, showing up absolutely. Just being. showing up and just being there. Yes. Yeah. And not letting fear take over. 
Fear is normal and natural. We all have it. We all deal with it. Mm -hmm. But it's being able to know that we as human beings actually are in control of how we choose to react and respond to the fear. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. I want to thank you today for spending time with me, Elliot, because I know how busy you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it was, I, had the, I had, was lucky enough to have the day off, so I was running errands, and then it worked out perfectly. So thank you. I'm happy. Yeah, and thank you for everything that you said. I think you're an amazing person. I'm really happy for you. Congratulations on this tour. I know there's going to be many more opportunities for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye.